Hello there, fight friends. Andy Cotterell with MMA.ca here with Kyle the Monster Nelson at House of Champions in Stony Creek, Ontario. Kyle, uh, thanks for speaking with us. Uh, so you're getting set to fight on June 10th against Blake Builder at UFC 289. Uh, tell me about your thoughts about this fight and, uh, and how you're preparing for it. Yeah, I'm very excited for this fight. Blake's undefeated so far. You know, he's one and zero in the UFC with one in on the, one win on the Contender Series. Uh, on the Contender Series, he fought another Canadian, Alex Morgan. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be nice to to get in there and kind of expose some of the holes that maybe other opponents haven't yet, and uh, you know, kind of get one back for Canada. Nice. So. Your, your your performance so far in the UFC, you've shown a lot of strengths, a lot of uh, a lot of skills in the cage, but that's not enough sometimes. Like it, it has to be the right game plan for the right opponent. So like you're really, I'd say it's not no secret you're wrestling heavy. You're really dominant on the ground. Um, do you see that affecting this fight and the outcome? Yeah, definitely. I mean, sometimes this, you know, my my wrestling, my jujitsu affects the fight. You know, if I want to make it offensive, but it can also affect the fight defensively. And I think in this fight. With Blake Biller, I think once I kind of touch him a few times, he's going to be looking for the takedown, and then I'll be able to take it or use my my defensive wrestling to kind of control where the fight is and keep it on the feet, and then look to finish him with our with my hands. So I don't know what people that are unfamiliar with fighting, unfamiliar unfamiliar with mixed martial arts think. They think they see a fighter in the UFC, and that's the fighter that they are, and that's the fighter they're going to be forever. So tell me about your training process, and when it comes from maybe not even necessarily this fight camp, how does it work in your career to to, to self-evaluate, or maybe it's not self-evaluation, to just evaluate your progress and where you are and your skills as a fighter? Like, when you see yourself, whenever you retire at some point between now and somewhere in the future, let's say you're at a 100% fighter, where do you think you are right now, and how do you have that evaluation process to make sure that you're always going up? Yeah, I mean, like, as far as my potential, I think, you know, there's still lots of potential left. So maybe I'm at 85, 90% of my full potential. And then, yeah, I mean, just getting to that 100% is just making sure we're improving every training camp, you know, every every training session, every month, always building, you know, getting 1% better. And then eventually, you know, we'll get to that 100%. Mm -hmm. And with that, I mean, some stuff we take from fights, so previous fights where, you know, I've won or I've lost or, you know, things have gone well in the fight and we can take individual things, whether it's a good takedown or a bad takedown, and then we bring it to the gym and we work on it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, the strength and conditioning. Maybe I go through a fight and maybe, you know, it doesn't look like I got tired, but maybe in the fight I was like, oh, my arms were really yeah. tired or my legs got tired. Yeah. So we start, you know, adding in some extra conditioning on those specific assets to then again help build my, my overall game. Tell the fans who are watching who your team is, who you train with, and who prepares you for the UFC fights. Yeah, so, I mean, I do most of my training at House of Champions. I also travel up to Muskoka Martial Arts up in Gravenhurst. Then uh, I do some sparring and stuff at Niagara Top Team with, you know, Mike Malott. Deanna Bellabitza is one of my, you know, close training partners. Jazz, Jazz Divisius. Uh, I mean, Anthony Romero, Aaron Jeffries. Like, we got so many people that were, you know, in this kind of GTA, kind of Southern Ontario area and you know so we have guys competing in ufc b or pfl bfl uh bellator so i think this is kind of the hotbed for you know canadian mma right now and i'm very fortunate that i get to, to work with all these guys so it, it is a pretty unique situation i know elsewhere in the country sometimes they're very territorial and they don't like sharing training or coaches or training methodologies or things like that so you're seeing a lot of success come out of this area so i'm wondering if that will become a, a blueprint for other areas possibly uh, I mean, if they're smart, yeah. I, you know, working together again. I'm never gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be fighting, you know, Aaron Jeffries in Bellator. You know, different weight classes, different organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Anthony Romero, 155. He's in PFL. I mean, even if uh, we were in the same weight class, there's so many other fighters in the UFC, in you know, Bellator. You know, I think for us to to come together and build off each other is much more valuable for mm -hmm. us our gyms and all of our training partners then you know you know being a little egotistical and be like oh, i'm not going to train with that guy because he's in my division and one day we might fight yeah yeah i think we we all benefit more you know sticking together as canadians and, and mm -hmm. working together so you do travel between uh, stony creek ontario and muskoka for your training one of the things i i noticed and i mentioned this to you earlier on today is that i like seeing that you appear you know social media you never know for sure what's really happening but 
just looking at your social media, it seems like you have a really strong work-life balance. Like office workers talk about that all the time, like work-life balance. And it seems like you make your family a priority as much as you can, as somebody could, in addition to being a high caliber fighter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's something that's taken a little bit to, to grow into. Uh, you know, when I was younger, it was everything was was fighting. You know, I was put my chin down uh, and just focusing on fighting 100%. But, you know, once you have kids, you know, you can't be as selfish anymore. And, you know, MMA is a sport that you need to be selfish to some degree in. Because you need to make sure you're you're at your peak, you're at your best, you're you're taking care of yourself. But then you know when you throw kids into the mix, you know then you need to make sure they survive as well. So mm. it's uh, it's definitely you know a different um, you know kind of growing period for me. But I do feel like now where I'm at with my my fiance and my kids and stuff, I feel like I've got a good good balance where I can kind of turn off the you know, the, the MMA fighter, even if it's just for a Sunday and then, yeah. you know, spend the day with the kids, go to church, you know, sit down, have a picnic or something and kind of, you know, put this, uh, this whole MMA stuff on the back burner mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, realize there's going to be a life after this sport and I don't want to, you know, retire in five years and then, you know, see my kids and be like, whoa, you're 15. I've, you know, mm -hmm. I don't even recognize you. I want to try and be there and be um, present as much as possible sure. throughout their, their younger years. Yeah. Uh, tell me what your thoughts were when you heard that you're going to be fighting in Canada at UFC. I was very excited. I mean, there was so many rumors off and on over the last couple of years about uh, UFC coming to Canada. And then like, oh, there's some restrictions. There's still some pandemic stuff going on. So it was never really 100% for sure. So when it finally, you know, happened, we're like, awesome. You know, it's in Canada. Where is it going to be? Is it going to be, you know, Calgary? Is it going to be BC? Is it going to be Toronto? Uh, but I mean, just being in Canada after so many years off, it's it's great to be back. And, and you know, I think the fans are going to be very excited. I think I've, I've got messages from people all over Canada. They're going to be flying into to BC to watch the fight. So very excited to have friends and family there. And uh, yeah, hopefully they can come back again uh, to Canada, hopefully over here on the, the East Coast or, you know, Toronto. So I... It's funny when Canadians go down to the United States, there's an attitude, well, first of all, we've all heard the USA, USA chants, and I'm sure you've gotten some of those before when you fought down there. It's not going to happen this time. You're going to be in Canada. Uh, there's like a, like a half dozen Canadians fighting on the card. So when you go in that arena, when your name's announced and you're from Canada, you're going to get that pop. You're going to get that cheer. Is that something you've been visualizing or, is it, or, or have you really experienced that to that level before? Uh, I live, my first fight was in Toronto, so I got a little bit of that. But yeah, I definitely think, you know, after the UFC not being here for so long, I think, and I might be one of the first Canadians uh, fighting on the card. So, you know, I'm kind of hoping or expecting, you know, a, you know, a loud, loud crowd and, and a big chant. Uh, but I haven't thought about it too much. I'm going to kind of let it, you know, kind of hit me and all sink in as I walk down to the octagon. Yeah, I bet it's going to be incredible. It's going to be one of those memories. Uh, is your family going to come out? So my fiance is going to come out. She's going to be in my corner again. Uh, but that's basically it. Uh, you know, some friends and, and family, uh, um, close family uh, might come out. But like my parents are going to stay back in Huntsville and, mm -hmm. and the kids will stay. Uh, my son's eight three and eight right now so i don't usually let them watch the fight live um if everything goes well i'll, I'll show it to them after but yeah, yeah. um yeah so nice well kyle uh any last words anybody you'd like to thank or anything you want to say to the fans before we go uh yeah i mean thanks a lot for everyone that has supported me so far all my sponsors friends and family and then you know everyone that bought a ticket that's going to come out and support you know make sure you you cheer real loud and uh you know i'm excited to put on a show for you guys awesome well kyle uh best of luck congratulations on all your success and your continued success, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to be rooting for you at UC, at UC 289 in Vancouver. Thank you. All right, fight fans, there you go. Kyle the Monster Nelson at House of Champions in Stony Creek, Ontario. Wish him luck, June 10th, UFC 289.